Praise the Lord. God is so good. He is good all the time. And in everything, we're going to praise him and worship him and adore him and glorify his name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Gemma Wenger, and you're watching Beauty for Ashes. And the Lord has been really speaking to me that when we are weak, he is strong. When we have doubts, when we don't have gifts or talents or we feel less than, his power comes and his power overcomes us. So we know that the power is of him and it's not of us. It's not our own power. That's why he says that this power is an earthen vessel. So we know that the power is of him and not of us. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. I'm going to glory in my lack. I'm going to glory in what I don't have. I'm going to glory in the obstacles in my path. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knows that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor under Eretus the king kept the city of the Damascenes with a garrison desiring to apprehend me. So this is the governor of Damascus had a whole army after Paul wanting to throw him into prison, wanting to lock him up. That's what the devil is trying to do to you. He thinks he's so big, he has so much authority, and he's got a whole army that's trying to attack you. And those fiery darts come at you. They will not prosper, but there are times you really feel them. There are times it really hurts, but you have to keep confessing. Hallelujah. No weapon, no weapon, not any weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Hallelujah. No weapon formed is going to prosper in the name of Jesus. No weapon of sickness. No weapon of abandonment, no weapon of rejection, no weapon of sin is going to prosper in your life. It's going to come at you, but you put up that shield of faith whereby you can quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. The devil says it's never going to happen. You're not going to make it. You don't have what it takes. Put up the shield of faith. No. God is going to do it. God's going to work that miracle. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep on working. I'm going to keep on being obedient. I am not going to give up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just put up that shield of faith. Praise God. It says that the governor, praise God, wanted to apprehend Paul. But through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. Hallelujah. God will make a way of escape for you. God will work that miracle in your life where it seems like you are surrounded by the enemy, that there is no way out. God will make a way out. God will provide for you. God will do the impossible. Praise Jesus. Then we go on to 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. And the Bible also says that his thorn in the flesh was an infirmity in the flesh. And we know that in scripture, the people that Paul was writing to said, I know that you would have plucked out your eyes and given them to me. And he also said, look, with what large a letter I am writing to you. So we know that he was going blind. So we do believe, hallelujah, that his infirmity in the flesh 
the thorn in the flesh was an infirmity in the flesh, and the fact was that he was going blind. But wait a minute. Think about all the people who could see, who weren't going blind at that time. Did they affect the world like Paul's writings? He was going blind, and God called him to write letters. Isn't that just like God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul, you're going blind, but I've called you to write letters, even though you can barely see. It was God. It was the hand of God, and he changed lives for all eternity. Praise Jesus. So, in order that he would not be exalted, in order that he would not be lifted up in pride, God gave him this thorn in the flesh so that he wouldn't look down on others because he really had more knowledge, had more understanding, had more experiences and and revelation from God. God gave him this thorn in the flesh to buffet him lest he should be exalted above measure. Because the minute pride comes in, the Holy Spirit goes out. The minute you think you know more than everybody else, that spirit is called pride. And that makes it so you don't know half as much as anybody else because you're blind and you cannot see clearly. For this thing I besought the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And that's what the Lord is saying to you today. Hallelujah. His grace is sufficient. You may be feeling all alone. You may feel unloved. You may feel rejected. You may feel like God let you down. Hallelujah. His grace is sufficient for you. His grace will come through for you in a mighty and a powerful way. He says, my strength is made perfect in weakness. My strength is made perfect in weakness. We are that all-perfected bride of Christ. Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered. Hallelujah. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. When you are weak, he is strong. When you are lacking, hallelujah, his strength comes in and meets the need. All the Lord needs you to do is get up, Take those steps in the right direction, and the Lord will pick it up from there. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I'm going to glory in my infirmities. I'm going to glory in the fact that I'm going blind and I have this thorn in the flesh so that God's power may be seen in me, so that God's power will be strong in me, so that it will be his strength and not my own strength. It's kind of an interesting story, praise the Lord. About four weeks ago, I was praying, and I had had a ministry on Sunday, and all of a sudden, the devil just, like, took it away. And it is what it is, but I knew that the Lord was going to work it out for good, and it was going to be okay. So I had made the decision I would just pray on Sundays and just really get into prayer Sunday mornings. And I got a call from somebody that I had met the week before, and she was like, you know, the BBC called me. They want to interview me, and they want to interview other people who think the same way that I do. And I was like, BBC, that's the British Broadcasting Company, and they are worldwide. I mean, they're huge. And so uh, I was like, yeah. And then she's like, well, um, can we use your house to film in? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I didn't even know how she knew that I had a house, praise the Lord. But anyway, praise God, it just turned out to be such a blessing. They came and they filmed the women. We were talking and discussing various topics. And then just recently, they put it on their website. It's going to go on the radio, the website, and their world news television. And it just, it was, it came up number two 
in most watch videos. It came up number two. And so I just praise the Lord that it had like 5,788 shares and just the number two most watched video. And it was such a blessing. It was like the kiss of the Lord. And I never could have opened that door, but I met this woman, Linda, at an event the week before that God told me to go to, that the enemy tried to stop, that the enemy tried to hinder, and God told me to go, and that was the connection, and it was such a blessing. It, it was so much fun, and I love television, and so God is opening more and more doors, so I want to praise the Lord for that. So I'm going to glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And I praise God for his power. I want his power to rest upon me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And then verse 10, 2 Corinthians 12, 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. Uh-oh. I take pleasure in infirmities. I take pleasure when things aren't going right. I take pleasure. Why? Because, praise Jesus, for when I am weak, then I am strong. He says, I take pleasure in reproaches. When people put me down, when people lie about me, when people come against me for no reason. Why? For when I am weak, the flesh is weak, that fleshly man, the old man, is weak, then I'm strong in Christ. Then the power of God can be revealed in me and in that situation. I want him to be honored. I want him to be glorified. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Then he says, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, when I have a need. Why? Because God is going to fill your need. God is going to meet your need. So he says, I take pleasure in necessities because when I'm weak, then I'm strong. When I don't know where the money's going to come from, when I don't know how, if I'm going to have a job next week or not, when I'm weak, he is strong. His power is going to be seen in that dark situation, in that circumstance. Praise God. He says, I take pleasure in persecutions. And we know that Paul was persecuted. I take pleasure in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Raise your hand if you take pleasure in distresses. Raise your hand when you take pleasure when you're needy or persecuted. Hallelujah. That's how God wants us to look at that situation. When you are weak, when you get a bad report from the doctor, then he is strong and he will strengthen you and he will lift you up off of that sick bed. Hallelujah. He will sustain you. When you are weak, then he is strong. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. 2 Corinthians 13, 4. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Though he was crucified in weakness. So, hallelujah, he gave his body up to be killed, to be crucified, to be beaten. He was crucified in weakness. He could have come and just destroyed everybody by the power of God, but he chose not to because that wasn't the plan. Yet he lives by the power of God. His flesh was crucified. And your old man, your flesh, your old way of thinking needs to be crucified, needs to be put to death in the name of Jesus so that you will live by the power of God. 
Hallelujah. In weakness, he was crucified, but he now is seated at the right hand of God the Father, and he lives forevermore by the power of God. God's power is going to sustain you. God's power is going to touch you. Oh, hallelujah, just reach out and touch the hand of the Lord. Just reach out in faith toward the television. Just receive the miracle. Receive the healing. Receive the blessing. Let the Spirit of the Lord minister to you right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord wants to use you. The Lord wants to raise you up. Hallelujah. Don't give up. Don't turn back. I feel like there's somebody who's contemplating suicide. The Lord says, no, in Jesus' name, stop. In the name of Jesus, God's hand is upon your life. You thought God would use you, and then you feel like God hasn't used you, or there's no way for God to use you. And the Lord says, I will use you. Do it my way. Trust in me. Even when you are in that lonely place, I see like a, a cubicle, a small cubicle. The Lord says, I am with you. I will help you. I will bring you through. I will turn your sorrow into joy. Hallelujah. I will heal your disappointment and your frustration. I will minister to you and I will raise you up. But I see there is a season and there has been a season of sorrow and sadness. And God has not lifted that off of you right away. But the Lord is lifting that off of you even now. And hope and life and love is springing forth in Jesus' name, in your heart. He loves you. He created you for a purpose and for a plan. And he's touching you and he's healing you right now in Jesus' name. So, praise God. 2 Corinthians 13, 4. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. We shall live with him by the power of God. In him we live and we move and we have our being. Hallelujah. He is our everything. Trust him during those hard times. Trust him during those trials. He We'll see you through. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then we have Galatians. Praise God. How, actually, praise God. I think I miswrote that. Galatians 1, 3. There it is. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Only God can give you peace. If you need peace from that anxiety and that worry... Hallelujah. It's just your mind is racing. Just go to the Lord. Just enter in. He will give you peace. Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. God wants to deliver you from the world and the things of the world. He wants to set you free. When you are in bondage to sin, when that sin is pulling you, you're not free. God wants to break that pull. God wants to set you free. That's so powerful. Who gave himself for our sins. Jesus died on the cross for your sins that he might deliver you from sin, that he might deliver you from sickness, that he might deliver you from this present evil world. The Bible says, come out from among them. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you to myself, and you will be my sons, and you will be my daughters. So we are coming out from this world by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ into another gospel. He says, you know, later on he says, O foolish Galatians, 
Who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you to follow another gospel other than the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. We have to make sure that we know the word of God, that we know the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, because there are people who would try to bring in subtle changes, subtle errors, and we have to be on our guard. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Paul is saying, if I come again and preach another gospel than the one I already preached to you, let him be accursed. Don't even listen to me preaching another gospel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's word is pure. And then verse 9. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel to you than that you have received, let him be accursed. Hallelujah. This is the word of God. Don't believe any other gospel. This is the word of truth. He says, For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Paul is saying, hallelujah, do I seek to please men or do I seek to please God? You're going to be tested in that area. Are you going to make the decision to serve God? Or are you going to make that decision to please man? And it's especially difficult when money is involved and when you need money because somebody doesn't like that you're preaching uh, hallelujah, that the body of Christ can move in the gifts of the Spirit and tongues and prophecy and healing and deliverance. And they want you to stop preaching that. And if you don't, they're going to stop giving. And they're one of your biggest givers. What do you do? Do you please man and get the money? Or do you please God and you lose that money, but then God opens a bigger, better hallelujah, more prosperous, more abundant door for you. The Lord always has shown me that your blessing comes from him. Your blessing comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. Please him. He's the one who can open doors for you. I couldn't open that door to be on the British Broadcasting Network. I couldn't open that door to be the number two watched video for those three days. Hallelujah. God is good. He sees that sacrifice. And if it is a real sacrifice and if it really hurts, God sees that. You are being tested. And when you make that right decision, watch the Lord bless you like never before. He says, for do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. He says, if I seek to please men, I am not the servant of Christ. I want to be a servant of Christ. And how do you become a servant of Christ? You please God. You do what he tells you to do. You be led by him and his voice. And you're going to know, you're going to know, you're going to have peace when you make that decision for the Lord. If you are outside the will of God, there is no peace. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And then in verse 12, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he is saying that I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. I didn't receive it of man. Man didn't teach it to me, but it was given to me by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And these things, these mysteries are spiritually discerned. Hallelujah. You need to have that spiritual revelation, that spiritual understanding. Paul says, no man taught this to me, but God taught it to me. 
If you want the Lord to teach you, if you want the Lord to open up your heart and give you revelation knowledge and give you spiritual understanding, if you want the blinders to come off of your eyes, just pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you died on the cross to heal my body, to wash me and cleanse me and purify me from all unrighteousness. Lord, hallelujah, touch me right now. Heal the pain of the past. Heal the hurt of the past. Heal the abuse of the past. Jesus, heal my broken heart. God, I believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus Christ. I believe that he died on the cross so that I might walk in victory and have power over the devil. And I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I curse every work of darkness, even as Jesus cursed the fig tree and God, hallelujah, right now, I want my flesh to be put to death so that I might live anew, hallelujah, for the glory of God, hallelujah. I want to be alive in Christ, and I want to live in newness of life. Oh, God, just touch each person that prayed that prayer. Minister to them. Be with them. Hold them in your arms of love and let them truly know that you are a loving Savior and that you're going to bless them and they're going to see the blessings of God in their life. They're going to see the joy and the peace and the love like never before. Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. And I pray that you give that person the desires of their heart, that thing that they desire as they seek you first. Hallelujah. I'm Pastor Gemma Wenger. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can go to my website at GemmaWenger.com. I have church meetings every Monday night and Friday night in Los Angeles, California. You can get that address on the website. You can write to me with any prayer requests or any praise reports at Gemma Wenger, hallelujah, at me.com. Praise the Lord. If you would like to donate online, GemmaWinger.com is just the place. And if the Lord is speaking to your heart to give, give as the Lord has spoken to you. And remember, if God has spoken to you, the enemy is going to come in right away and say, no, don't do that. You can't afford it. That's not God speaking to you. But it is God speaking to you because if you give the Lord the money that he gave you in the first place, God is going to give you more. God is going to bless you abundantly. Prove him. Prove him. Try him. Will he not pour you out a blessing that you can hardly contain? It's been so wonderful ministering to you, and I just praise God that you have tuned in, and I, I pray that you have gotten blessed and healed, and I praise God for the miracles that he's doing in your life. I'm Pastor Gemma Wenger, and you're watching Beauty for Ashes. Mm -hmm.